what's up youtube so i did a video before telling you guys about all the great things about the gi bill post 9 11 and there are a lot of great things about it but today i'm going to tell you guys some of the downsides that you may not know about just in case so you don't get hit blindsided by this all right so i'm gonna give you the little list of stuff that i came up with Things that you don't want to be blindsided by, by the GI Bill. All right, let's jump right into it. Number one, uh, the payments are prorated, all right? You need to make sure that you realize if you're going to be counting on the GI Bill as your primary source of income, if you start school August 26th, you're not going to get paid the full amount for that month. You're going to get paid for the last four or five days of that month. So that check is going to be looking kind of skimpy. So you may want to consider uh, getting a side job or something, doing some Uber, doing something where you got some extra money coming in because that prorated shit really can kill you, especially if you got a lot of bills, rent, you know, you guys know car note, all that good shit, all right? So payments are prorated. Number two, the pay rates fluctuate, all right? When I first got out of the military, I live in Houston, Houston uh, GI Bill was paying $1,812 per month, per full month of school with the GI Bill. And I was like, oh, yeah, this is great. You know, I was collecting them checks. And then I had moved out. I was paying my rent. And then literally right when I moved out, the payment, the, the pay rate went down to $1,600 because apparently the cost of living went down in Houston. That's what they say. But my rent was still the same, you know. They didn't give a shit. They were like, yo, you, you still got to pay, you know, your rent and shit. So just know that from city to city, uh, due to technicalities, the pay rates will go down, all right? And they can go back up, too. Like, it went down to 1600 now it's back up into the 1700s. But that's a downside when that shit goes down because you're used to getting that certain amount. So be wary of that. Number three. If you drop classes after the refund dates, you have to pay the difference. Meaning, let's say that uh, you sign up for four classes and then you end up waiting past uh, the day when you can get 100% of your refund back after dropping the class. Let's say you can only get 50% of it back and you want to drop a certain class because you don't like a teacher. Okay, cool. The class costs a thousand dollars. You can only, you only get fifty percent of that refund back. The the VA is gonna be asking you for that five hundred dollars that you because you got five hundred dollars in refund, which is gonna go to them. But they're gonna want that other five hundred dollars that you didn't get back in the refund. You have to pay that, and if you don't pay it, they're gonna fuck up your credit. All right, so make sure. You pay that back. They're going to let you know. Don't worry. They'll contact you. They will find you, all right? You don't have to worry about that. They're going to find you, and they're going to ask for their money back. But be wary of that. So drop your shit before it's too late. And the fourth and final thing is if you fail, um, you have to pay the money back. And the only reason I really kind of put that, I haven't failed anything, thank God, since I've been in college. But I just think that that would really suck to not only fail a class, but you also have to pay that shit back for the class that you failed. That's just adding insult to injury, if you're asking me. But yeah, those are my top cons that I will say about the GI Bill. The GI Bill is a blessing to me. I really love that shit. And it was hard coming up with, you know, some real downsides to it, but... Those, that's my list of downsides, all right? So y'all take it easy.